Oh, that's right. Heathcliff has uh, just realized his wife who died. That's okay, buddy. That's okay, buddy. <laughs> Fixers of the Ophi, the Oofy, the Oomphy Association. Who have remained silent throughout this entire commotion suddenly spoke up. I liked how Heathcliff looked in this outfit. You guys look kind of funny. The promised hour is come. Mr. Henry Earnshaw, a blood relative of the deceased. Mr. Linton Edgar, the spouse of the deceased. And Mr. Heathcliff, an individual mentioned by name in the will. Now that the three relatives' parties are all present, we, as the executioners of the deceased's will, will begin the ceremony. The first order of business will be the execution of Miss Catherine's will. No. What do you mean, no? You! Stop! Shut up for a second! I'm having a mental instability over here! What? What was that about her spouse? The man they called Linton rose from his seat for the first time and somehow didn't collapse under his own weight. <laughs> After you abandoned this place with nary a word to her, Catherine immediately turned to me. Then we married. Every waking hour we spent together were filled with happiness and joy. We were very happy to the last day, to her very last breath. Uh, it's about to be your last breath. The moment I set my foot in this manner, I heard her voice. I felt her presence. So what the bloody hell are you even talking about? Is this be some ploy? Oh, these effing bastards! Oh, they must have... This can't be! Somebody get Heathcliff his medication, please. Warning. Should this interruption of the wheel of the garden continue, we may have to resort to the use of force to ensure the full execution of this will. Shut up! You don't know shit, so shut your effing mouth! Can we like so, someone take out Hindley and like pour some water on him or something? Marriage, Esquire, must we must do it on fixes of the Elfi Association may even execute those individual involved should there be a breach of contract. I mean, you guys are invincible. Hey, it's, it's fine. It's nap time, Heathcliff. Ah. Thank you. Like, whoa. D did she just knock him out clothes with bare hands? There was even a punch. A slight tap. Yeah, Rodian, that's what a light tap looks like. Oh my god, who let him wake up? I will now read the full contents of her will. At last. You are all gathered here. My only wish is that my words will be met with respect, without hostility among you. You know, I'm sorry, Catherine, but the, you're kind of late for that. I don't know why you thought sticking these three people in the same room together was not going to cause conflict, but, you know. This manner, which I will leave to my husband, Linton Edgar. Keep this manner and remember me by its presence. And my brother, Hindley, my one and only brother. I heard that you are mired in quite the heavy debt, and that you have been spending most of your days drinking and gambling. So I. Catherine. Signed you up for the Abyss Trauma Correctional Facility at M Corp. Poo -poo. Of course, I have already prepared a warp train to Oh no. And you, Heathcliff. Oh shit, I get something? Oh shit. Once the seventh strike of lightning falls upon this manor, my golden bow shall be yours. Oh, that was nice. Thank you, Kathy, for giving away your golden bow to Heathcliff and not the company. Totally gonna be his. Don't worry about it. No, this isn't at all what I would. What I, uh, come back, Kathy. Uh, please. I, I just. Hit my voice just once, Kathy. Just go out. Oh, shit. I think I screamed too loud. I found this child dying alone in the streets. I thought it would be funny to adopt him as a pet. He was without parents or home. The boy surely would have died in a weather like this. I found I thought it would be funny. Look at him. Look at how smelly and poor he is. Isn't this funny, guys? Don't worry. You can feed him and take care of him and take him for walkies. Violin! I, I want my violin! If I don't get my violin, I'm gonna turn to alcoholism. There are other children like him in the back streets. No parents or relatives to look after them. No homes to shelter them. Isn't that hysterical? Like, what we just saw were, like, Catherine's memories, right? Like, now it's just being, like, shoved into all of our brains. Dante, get your flashbacking under control. God. Hold on, like, this is, like, this is the corridor, like, we walked through earlier, isn't it? Like, this isn't where we were before the power outage. Thank you, Captain Ishmael Obvious. With what you said about Miss Catherine's death and how you didn't believe that she was truly dead. What? 
Oh, sorry, I was, I was disassociating. I gave that idea some thought. And I agree to an extent. What? Heathcliff's pupil suddenly dilated. He's like, <gasps> Even I haven't seen Miss Catherine's body. I was so beside myself when Mr. Master Linton told me of Miss Catherine's passing that I did not even care to verify it with my own eyes. So, what you're trying to say here is... Is it really what I think it is? But you're saying that, well, Kathy might be still alive? Nothing but a suspicion at this point. Besides, you know how Miss Catherine can be. Yeah, she always liked riddles. I always hated them because I couldn't understand any of them. And not like you, who preferred a more direct approach, which involved smashing everything to pieces. <laughs> Got me into plenty of trouble for trying to brute force the problems <laughs> with that even trying to think about them. Uh, or the intent. <laughs> My speciality, not thinking. <laughs> I'm so good at that. A faint smile appeared on Heathcliff's face as he seemed real proud about the fact that he's an idiot. You're a bad boy, Sandra. No, I'm a wolf wolf. I didn't even get close. Speak plainly, Hindley. What have you done to this manor? Hang on, dear Mr. Wibbly. After the lightning struck, after the lights flickered, the dead rabbit suddenly charged us. Hindley, that fool must be scheming to take over our manor. Do not get in my way of punishing this rat that dared to the scheme. Take our Wuthering Heights from us. Oh, do I get to murder you now? Oh, hell yeah. I'm lying to dirty that you don't deserve a coin. No guts. Dearest, I would like you to serve that fam down side. I hear Henley's voice echoing from Heathcliff's memories. Man, the alcoholism hit him, hit him real hard. This revenge may not be so difficult after all. We just had to pretend we didn't see anything, leave Henley behind, and have Josephine and her butlers take care of him for us. Would have been great. But I, we both know how this is going to end. Uh, I can feel Heathcliff's turning slightly look in my direction. I'm sure he's thinking the same thing I am. No, Cluckface. Uh, I won't leave him to die. I want to get revenge personally. <laughs> I didn't write, write revenge on my back for nothing. You won't? I won't. Because Kathy wouldn't have wanted me to abandon that sod to die by their hands. Not like this. Okay, fine. I guess we'll murder everyone in the whole goddamn mansion. All you can hear is he goes like, Bloody plonkers, why do we gotta make me so sad? It's like, no, this is the sad chapter. Be sad, get in your sad, do a sad. Be depressed. Holy shit, Otis is just gonna murder everybody. All right, just kill it. The poor thing's already dead. There, there she goes. Get as much use out of sad cliff as possible because we're never gonna get use out of him again. <laughs>